we're back in Brooklyn. I'm so excited. Here's everything. I've been really lucky to travel to so many places in my life, but this trip, this one right here, probably was the saddest I've ever been on a vacation. I grew up in New York City. I grew up in Brooklyn, and it is still to this day, I think, the greatest city in the world. It holds such a special place in my heart, but also the, for the past few years, I've actually been living in South Korea, and I never really got to visit New York just because it's such a long flight and I couldn't bring myself to get on it. But I finally went back and I was hit with a hard reality that things have changed. I just like that I'm with all my friends, but you're all on your phone. It's fair to see faux pas. It's really weird to revisit your hometown because I feel like I'm a New Yorker at heart, but there were still so many things I had to relearn or learn anew because so many things had also changed. And I almost felt like a tourist in my own city, if you know what I mean. Today's not cloudy, but it's very cold. And I, <laughs> I was like, I'm going outside. And then yesterday was a beautiful day, but we went shopping at Woodbury Commons and I didn't film anything because priorities shopping anyways we're going into the city again today let's see what i get up to it might look like i'm shopping a lot in these videos but it's only because i had drastically underprepared my suitcase for the tumultuous weather for literally the time i was in new york because when i had first looked up the weather it was supposed to be nice and warm and quite sunny but as soon as I arrived, the weather completely took a U-turn and it was cold and it was raining and it was awful. So I was just like, I need, I need warmer things. <laughs> I need to layer. Also guys, if you don't know about these donuts, please do yourself a favor and go get them. They are amazing. And then one of my favorite things about getting to go home is getting treated by my family to nice dinners that I normally wouldn't go to, probably myself but we went to an omakase at one of my favorite childhood sushi restaurants. It's actually owned by our friend Nobu, um, who's from Japan and his family. And I had literally not seen him in all those years and he was so surprised by how much I'd grown up. And I was so surprised because when I met him, he didn't have any kids yet and now his kids are going into high school. So <laughs> it's been a wild ride to see so many familiar faces and old faces. We had a Soprasada sandwich. It's good, but I wish it was like warm. All right, I know I just said I don't do a lot of shopping, but the clothes were because it was cold. This was because I genuinely had been wanting one of these for a while and they don't sell it in Korea. So I had to come to New York to buy it. So this, is, this has been on the bucket list for a little bit and I was really pleased with my purchase. I don't know, what do you guys think? <laughs> I had so much reverse culture shock going back home to New York after all this time living in Asia because let me tell you, the New York City subway system, I didn't realize how much I wouldn't miss this because every time I took the New York City subway when I was home this trip, I literally felt like I needed a shower immediately. I just think the Korea subway system or subway systems in Asia have really spoiled me and I will take them any day of the week over the MTA, although the MTA is a real one, but if you know, you know. Good morning. Today we're going to attempt to do a full day's log because I have not yet been able to film that. Taking out my camera in the middle of the city feels quite scary. I feel like someone's gonna come and take it while I'm walking with it. Hey 
Basically, my entire trip back to New York, it felt like I had imposter syndrome my entire time there because I was questioning myself on whether I was actually a true New Yorker or not anymore. Does it count if I haven't been there? But I mean, I have so much hometown pride and I still, I don't know, I can't, I can't give it up. I can't give up that part of my identity. But even, for example, the Brooklyn Bridge Park, it's changed so much. And this was somewhere I used to go constantly because I live right around here. And it was like I had never seen it before. It was so different. Sidebar, Korea. If you can please bring me butter pecan ice cream, I really think you guys would enjoy it as well. I know we don't have it here yet, but please bring it over as well as Trader Joe's. As for the ferries that have been made, these boats that were basically made during the pandemic, because I wasn't in New York at that time, this was my first time riding the boat. My friend Talia really wanted to take me to enjoy the scenery here. That's another thing as well. All of my friends who I grew up with, I mean, we grew up as kids together. They've seen me through the best and the worst of me ever since we were little. And I almost feel a sense of guilt for having moved abroad and not being there and growing with them and us having missed so much of each other's lives where I haven't been there for their milestones. And it just makes me feel as if I should step up and be better <laughs> to them and to everyone. My entire trip home, I, all I kept thinking about was how my greatest enemy forever will always be time. Time to be with my family, time to be with the animals, time to be with my friends, and how I've lost out on all those moments. But I, you know, I was also busy living my life and trying to create a, a life for myself on the opposite end of the world. It's crazy to think that my original plan was to have just two years in Korea. I was gonna go to Korea, be there for two years, and then move back home. And that has completely derailed to something completely different because it's been many more years since I've been living in Korea and I really don't know where I will be next. I don't know how long I will be in Korea. I don't know if I'm gonna move to a different country. I don't know if I will move back to New York. There's really no game plan. I have things I want to accomplish and things that I wanna do that I need to figure out first and then kind of the game plan will hopefully fall into place. But I think that was the scariest realization that, you know, even though in my mind, I was always like, well, New York will be the end of it. Like I will go back. But now that I've kind of been living my life, I don't know if I will be going back. And that's really scary to think that your home, like, your home, the place where you grew up, your childhood, your everything, you don't know if that's going to be the next plan. I will say I was very grateful, though, that I still have a New York State driver's license so I can get the, you know, like the make your own price at the museum. So that was always appreciated. I still think the Met Museum is probably one of my favorite museums in the world and the oil paintings are always my favorite part. I will always love New York and I think of it still as somewhere that I can always go to. And who knows, who knows what the future holds. Maybe I will be able to go back in the future and maybe I'll settle down there. But for now, I have other, other things going on and other adventures I wanna take where that kind of takes me, I'm not sure, but I'm super grateful for everything thus far and just kind of excited for hopefully good things up ahead. But yeah, I also cried a lot before I left, I have to say it. There was some heavy crying, but I'll leave you guys there and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.